I can recall a year ago in the semifinals being very impressed when Roger Nielsen came into this very studio after a losing effort here at the Forum and then impressed again when Roger comes by. And first off, Roger, the Leaf fans I'm sure would like to know what you can tell them on my phone. <laughs> He, uh, I think he got hit with uh, Steve Shutt's knee or something on that goal, that third goal, and uh, he was seeing. Make a honey grilled cheese goal. sandwich. Would you eat that? No, me neither. She goes into. He cared for everyone. He cared for his players. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to uh, to get to know him before I actually became an Ottawa Senator. For him, he was there, giving his all every single day to see us succeed and for him to come in and leading up to to his end and, and give us that last speech it wasn't even anything to do with hockey it just to bring it back to reality we get to play a game we love to play and there's more important things in life than than just hockey for me it's really incredible over six years the amount of changes that have been made and the amount of people that are being impacted by those changes is really incredible to me. Everyone thinks it's a, a gloomy place, but uh, you come down and uh, you meet some of the kids and they lift you up. There is tough days as well, but these kids put a smile on your face. I will never forget walking through these doors for the first time. I remember being in the parking lot with my husband and just bawling and like thinking, how are we these people? How are we those people who are at this place that we really didn't even understand what this place was? But when we came in, um, the library door was open and there was a team of caregivers, physicians, social worker. It felt like for the first time since the, everything had begun that people in that room valued his life just as much as we did. Mommy, t Matthew is my best friend. And I said, really? I said, well, he's a lovely boy. Um, you haven't known him that long. What makes him your best friend? And he looked at me and he goes, Mommy, he's just like me. And he meant that he's in a chair, can't talk very well, he's got a G-tube. And it's really interesting if you watch these boys side by side, mm -hmm. They lock eyeballs or they lock hands somehow. And you can just, you can feel that it. connection between the two of them. But even if we're not here, mm -hmm. that happens here. Yeah. Right? It's, it's and like <laughs> life-saving, I think, for us. Maybe for the boys too, but... And, and I don't think the journey is over, right? Like, no. we both know that mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's harder, there are harder battles to fight in the future, but it's giving our kids this incredible opportunity to just feel like every other kid. <laughs> I'm a volunteer, a play and learn and family support volunteer at Roger Nielsen House. I go and visit Yousef and his family uh, once a week for two hours. We have a wonderful time and it provides some respite for uh, Yousef's parents. Having such support you will recharge, right? And, and you would be able to carry on with the care and the support that you provide to your, to your child. This is for me as a, as a mom, I am always feel comfortable that there is a team standing behind me. Nurse Station, Jackie speaking. The families feel like they're continuously supported. It's not as though they have to leave the hospital and get in their car and drive somewhere else. They literally walk over from Chio. And our door is always open. This is a place where if you have a, uh, someone's having a crisis at home in the middle of the night, they can come here. Um, we are here 24 hours a day to support our families. Where are we? My bed door. Body, stuffy, and bus. It's called Roger Nielsen House, but I feel like it's more like a home. It is um, incredibly relaxed, comfortable, welcoming. Everybody makes sure that people have what they need, just like if you were visiting my home or if I was coming to your home. Our team is very small, of course small and mighty. Um, we only have about 40 staff, physicians, nurses, social workers, rec therapists, personal support workers, and who rounds us out is about 250 beautiful volunteers who donate their time every week. And it's truly an honor to be able to be with families and that they feel like this is their home, and that's important. We 
get to experience things that when you find out your child has this diagnosis, you think, my child will never experience that. Macy didn't get to go to birthday parties or play groups or have sleepovers, but here she got to do that with Lauren. They would just get to do so much and experience so much together and it's important to have someone, not, not somebody that's gonna sit there and be like, oh, that must be so hard. Someone that sits there and go, yeah, I get it. I get it. Lauren passed in November of 2016 and Macy passed in August of 2017, so not even a year after each other. Roger Nielsen House worked hard at coordinating for them to have their stars on the wall together. Side by side. Side by side. Because they were always together, and so why not have them together on the wall? I'm a mom of four kids. Three of them are in heaven, and Faith is our almost eight-year-old. Faith has been coming to, actually it just finished, the SIBS group. So for other kids who have experienced something very similar. So because we've gone through the situation, in 2009 we had a, a little one, and um, she died shortly after birth, and we didn't have the opportunity to come to Roger Nielsen House. As amazing as the hospitals are, they can only do so much. And so we were able to experience almost the same situation this time around, but in a different setting. And the difference between how we are today compared to how we were after we lost our first Dakota is... It's, it's totally night and day because we were able to come here and spend like 36 hours with her and see what it was like to be with a family or daughter, to see what it was like to have a little sister, all that, all that stuff that we wouldn't really be able to do in the hospital. And now it's just the... Um, <laughs> there's so many pictures and they're so amazing. They're professionally done and it's trying to decide which ones go on the walls. You want to try and keep a legacy for, for hope. That's kind of what our going forward mission is to advocate for the palliative care for somewhere to come because we know how important it is to have those precious hours no matter how small it is. And um, it's like they say, like a picture's worth like a thousand words. Like I wouldn't trade those 36 hours for anything in the world. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.